in the rec in records, it is said that one Dr. Anderson of Scotland, as we saw on the monument behind us here, that Dr. Anderson wrote the epitaph which appeared on the gravestone of Diosol. And it read, sacred to the memory of the Reverend Diosoga, the first ordained preacher of the Kafir race, as it was written. He was a friend of God, a lover of his son, inspired by his spirit, a disciple of his holy word, a zealous churchman and ardent patriot, a large-hearted philanthropist, a dutiful son, an affectionate brother, a tender husband, a loving father, a faithful friend, a learned scholar, an eloquent orator, and in manners, a gentleman. A model African for the imitation and inspiration of his countrymen. And I believe that there can be no greater justification for us to be here today than that we have come to pay tribute and indeed draw inspiration from one whom Dr. Anderson accurately described as a model, a model African for the imitation and inspiration of his countrymen and countrywomen. And two days from now, the sister people of the United States will solemnly honor the occasion 10 years ago when those to whom the lives of those they considered to be their enemies have no meaning brought death to thousands of Americans and the United States on what has come to be known as the 9-11 terrorism outrage. Informed by our African essence as human beings, uh, on this day sacred to us during our Heritage Month, all of us convey a message of solidarity and friendship to the American people and assure them that we stand with them as they renew their own commitment to the spirit of their Declaration of Independence, the Emancipation Proclamation, and President uh, Johnson's 1965 commencement address at Howard University. And in that address, uh, President Johnson said in far too many ways, American Negroes have been another nation, deprived of freedom, crippled by hatred, the doors of opportunity closed to hope. In our time, change has come to this nation too. More than a century earlier, in 1858, our own Teosoga had written surely then the time of favor to poor, benighted, and despised Africa is yet to be. In this regard, we hope and would like to believe that as they did during our struggle to defeat the apartheid crime against humanity, the American people will continue to stand with us in our struggle to defend our possibility as Africans to exercise our right to determine our destiny, which would signal about that our own time of change has come. In the context of what is happening in the wider world, it would seem strange that during these very troubled times in the history of Africa, we have taken the trouble to gather here, Gutandane, deep in the far off rural areas of our country, at the grave of an African who departed the world of the living 140 years ago. However, I believe that it is self evident that the poet laureate, Upunem Kai, for so such times as these when he said, Atikem nam du wali bele tai, Atikem nam du watu wa as geni nanani sisi tindi silo sinina, esi no kuteta ni esi bezi ngatete gie. Nam shan jili sweli asus, nam shan jilo mshabi alo, ndue sese swini mazeni ndue bele, then to say zalu in mazeni lunge, Nam Slang, I was a look in the Ganko. That was a listless nuts wrong. A kindred mind from across the oceans, the Irish poet W.B. Yeats sounded a similar warning in his famous poem, The Second Coming, when he said, Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. A shape with lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun, is moving its slow thighs while all about it, real shadows of the indignant desert beds. 
But now I know that 20 centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle, and what rough beast that last, it's our come round at last, slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. I think it is right at times such as these relating to our mother continent that we return to the graves of our ancestors, such as Teosoga's final resting place of Ututuka, once more to listen to what they said. As Libya burns far in Africa's north, surely as Africans we must ask ourselves some important questions. What happens that we allow that others should come from across the seas to decide how the Africans of Libya should govern themselves and therefore how they should live together as brothers and sisters? What has happened that we have been quiet as we have witnessed deadly disaster reign on the Africans of Libya? Why is it that we seem resigned to a fate which communicates the naked message that there will be other Africans tomorrow or the day after who will suffer the same fate as the Africans of Libya, subjected to the use of force by others from across the seas to force upon them the will of those who dispose of greater means to dispense death. What has happened? That we have seemed to be paralyzed. When we could see that what was happening to the Africans of Libya meant that others with access to superior weapons were making the statement that they will not ever again allow Africa freely to determine her destiny. As we stand here today at the grave of Diosoga, we need nobody to teach us what we have witnessed and are witnessing in the African country of Libya, that it can only portend the desperately unhappy future of the peoples of Africa, which our ancestors sacrificed their lives to defeat. As European powers in another century used the superiority of their arms to subjugate us and take ownership of our country and continent, asserting their claim to be our imperial and colonial masters. I know this as much as all of us here know this, that as Africans who have been accused by those who have dropped a deadly rain of bombs on the African people of Libya, that we demanded that they stop the slaughter and destruction because we were beholden to the then Libyan leader, Kenneth Gaddafi, who it was said had bought us with the US dollars handed to us in cash. But I plead your patience not to allow that before I conclude what I will say on this day. I address this insulting allegation later, drawing in part on what Teosoga wrote a century and a half ago. And so today we have returned to the final resting place of an eminent African patriot hopefully to reaffirm to him and ourselves that we'll honor what he taught, that will summon the courage never to betray the vision that he, his peers, his predecessors, and those who followed in his footsteps bestowed on us as a sacred heritage. As this solemn occasion demands, the story of Kiyosoga has been told once again. The story of one we count as one of our ancestors was told because it contains vital lessons about what we who live should do today, who count ourselves as its historical and historic descendants. The famous composer Ben Tamza shares, Kumgani uh, said, wrote his choral work, Tabalomti, as a salute to Teosok who had died 19 years before the composer was born in 1890. And in the lyrics, Tabalomti says, Tabalomti <laughs> Pagamamfana, Tabalom Tom Kul, Asimu Onumu, 
asingo uno mko, asingo wana lo mtu wa sumashatini, kwa wela manzi manzaka welo, goza ni mitaka ya sama ngesini, uundu kewe na mfana, uze uikonzi Afrika ya nyama, siyabule la siti uundu kutaba lo mungu. But these words, these words which also spoke of the intimate connection of the African to his and her historical habitat, and the indigenous forests of his and her natural environment, say that the composer knew what Teosoga meant to the Renaissance of Africa, many decades after he died, and thus said, Uzewi Konze, I Africa Emnya. To challenge the generations that lived, which might have begun to abandon the inspiration that Teosoga was, Unem Kai asked rhetorical and accusing questions. What in Kubano Anga Mazio Umfoka Soga Nasiz Mwati? Kubano Anga Wazio Amakulo Akia Tumileyo, these are sitting alako, no futelani kilongo, no snesi kwesi kuhu. Ubani yonga lwazi yoko hambi loma hambi. Unu ate ea ziwa kuna ni eskosa. Awai kukulua ni eskosa. Esim nani. Mkai spoke thus because he wanted to sound the alarm. Let's not forget that in Dio Soga the oppressed had an authentic part of the wild olive tree umum of the indigenous African forest. But what, what, what was the true meaning of this motif? Nkais was saying, as Tamza Shea had said, that even as he was buffeted by the destructive storms of the period of the immensely violent colonization of our country, Tio Soga had remained loyal to the aspirations of the African people to defend their identity and humanity and their right to self-determination and independence, as steadfast as the yellow wood and the wild olive trees that still stand in the indigenous Tsitsikama forest. As we stand here today at Teosoga's grave, surely all of us must ask ourselves the question, do our actions today give us a right and possibility justly to describe ourselves as Ama Taba Omuma Nomko. Teosoga lived and died during the immensely difficult and destructive period in our history, which preceded the brutal South African or the Anglo Boer War, when colonialism brutally imposed the savage will on the Africans of the Cape and the rest of the country, giving itself a beachhead it would use to conquer the rest of Southern Africa. And to maintain and perpetuate its pernicious domination over the indigenous millions, British colonialism pursued as a deliberate policy the task to obliterate our identity as a people. And so when Kai composed a poem to acknowledge the presence in our country of the then British Prince of Wales, he said, I quote Britannian go. Yes, and a bottle and a pipe. Yes, and no food is a tag in John. Yes, and a hulua, Miss Nandi. Yes, and a canoe and a bagato. Tahuba will see the pina. Little a pam baby, toilet silo. Nyasha, the guard Nyasha. Greater Tiosoga was a quintessential 19th century African product of, British, of the British colonization of our country. Of the same people whose royalty in Kai accused as Tiosoga had of having used the brute force of arms, liquor, and religion so to subjugate us that they appropriated themselves the right and power 
to expropriate the inheritance of an entire people. In all conscience, Dios Soga, one of the very first among the modern African intellectuals, should have become a slavish agent of the oppressor and the expropriator, but against all odds, he refused. His native sense of integrity and his personal courage told him that he had to refuse to be corrupted, to be bought and intimidated, turned into an enemy of his people and transformed into other than an African patriot. Regardless of and despite his education by Scottish Presbyterian missionaries and by eminent professors at Scottish universities. Instead, among others, Tio Soga insisted on a number of imperatives. He insisted that as Africans we must fight to recover and maintain our identity as a people, refusing to accept our characterization by the white colonizers as a people without history. We know with no unique sense of ourselves, with no culture and values of which we and all humanity should be proud. Abandu, Abangenami, Tetonis, Mise, people without laws and guiding values. He insisted that whatever the destructive fury of imperialism and colonialism and the attended racism, which he experienced throughout his life, the peoples of Africa would never be destroyed or subjugated but would in time reclaim Africa as their historic and sovereign matrimony. He insisted that all Africans everywhere would act together to secure their freedom, including the former African slaves in the Western diaspora of the United States, Latin America, and the Caribbean. With this conviction reinforced by what the Bible said, in Psalm 68, that Ethiopia shall soon stretch her hands to God. He insisted that for us as Africans, correctly to address our historic tasks, we had an absolute obligation to ourselves to discover the truth for ourselves and about ourselves and the rest of the world, refusing to accept the lies, the distortions and the propaganda we would be fed by others, including through the media and by those we count as our own. Reaching out to his own close children, which the members of the Soga family who are here today know better than the rest of us do, he urged that we must at all times remain proudly African. If you have time to travel to another part of our country, not too far from here, you'll find the yellow wood and the wild olive trees as old as you'd like to imagine standing tall and graceful in the Tsitsikama forest, which is part of the few hectares of our land which survived the rapacious greed of former loggers who cut down the old indigenous trees for profit with no care that Amakdaba Omnuma Nomkoba are to us sacred examples of who we are and what we seek to be. In that regard, we cannot but be moved by what Tio Soga wrote in his first article in 1862, which appeared in the first edition of the newspaper in now, in which he argued for the protection and maintenance of our identity as Africa. And he said, the of Sanga, Zinga Pezu Gwengomo, Nemali, Nohuza, Basing Enazis, Yonagdala, Ipinaimbaliazo,yamasiko,azo,amabinamashi. Lomar <laughs> 
Ipina in Valiama Boha, I bet all the Esos Vatus in Chevne. Begna sing a runa. I bet ten eyes in Fuba Zem Bofunes and Yan to lend to his job on Kulwato. Buy a pinaban to Bafu Selama for so Angaga Hotla. My info gave me so long ago, Sanga, or a toss and a Roman thing. Is a good shan elephant Kulu Lama. Nkai was saying, We must not lose our identity. Petu Tolo referred to other words that Nkai spoke, and he did the Reverend Finna did the same thing yesterday when he spoke about the need for all Africans everywhere in our country, in the rest of Africa and in the African diaspora to come together to make sure that they don't get destroyed. And when Diosoga said those words from the biblical Psalm, 80, Psalm 68 that Ethiopia shall soon stretch their hands to God, he sought to affirm that Africans were destined to be as advanced as any other people in the world. And as he said elsewhere, that God has made no race mentally and morally superior to other races. Which speaks to Isaac confirmed in 1906, 36 years after the death of Diosoga, when he wrote, Oh, for that historian, who with the open heart of truth, the open pen of truth, will bring to Africa's claim the strength of written proof, he will tell of a race whose onward tide was often swelled with tears, but in whose heart bondage has not quenched the fire of former years. He will write that in these later years, when Earth's noble ones are named, she has a role of honor too, of whom she is not ashamed. And he said, the giant is awakening. From the four corners of the earth, Africa's sons will have been proved through fire and sword, are marching to the future's golden door, bearing the records of deeds of Aladdin. Jonas Nzigo, who had the was in Sangin, who was part of the modern 19th century African intelligentsia, which sought to uphold Teosoga's vision about the need for the unity of all, all Africans to achieve their common goals. In 1883, 12 years after the death of Diosoga, calling for a united African struggle against colonialism, he had published a poem which said, Vugan Banwan, Bendabu Sig, Say Kalin Mugan Mugam Shop, you Babala Matambo, Matambo Amfre. Shoshon of Tom, or President Abbey, Sia Holy Sisu, Gamatam Bengosi, Ubong Rumlom, Utapu Sandy, Yakin Yogampa, and the Old Toast Boss, Yam Kupelesa Slave, Uganis Villa, Sendabo Museum. In the article in the newspaper in Daba that we've mentioned, Diosoga addressed the imperative for the nation to know the truth. And said, Siti, Kwangokwa singa matanda zindaba, ase ke ama kogana onge apele lepez wuitu. Si kinyi swa in tuana zonge gama ambananda, umzi ke wanagele ngalenda. Sing a band of Basile, La Aboit, to tell them found in Wendava, Gama Bandla, a cocker at the bed. Sizel was in the Banjagan Amsa, Sizel Raine. Thus did Josoga identify the critical need for our people to have access to the truth. Understanding the reality that disinformation is represented by the genocidal non nausea episode. And earlier occurrences during the African struggle against colonialism had caused what he correctly characterized as much damage to the nation. 
to honor my earlier promise to revert to the matter of Libya, I'm certain that there is no need to demonstrate how much this pernicious practice, the conveyance of deliberate untruths, informed the deadly offensive against the Libyan people, whose central aim was and is to determine who governs this country, and not the professed intention to save civilian lives. lives. Equally, therefore, there should be no need further to argue why the insulting assertion that Libya has been bought, that Africa has been bought merely to defend Gaddafi of Libya and therefore permit him to maintain his illegitimate power, speaks directly to the imperative which Tiosoga addressed of protecting ourselves from the peddlers of lies, of misrepresentations and rumors, whom he described as Amahamba Nanda. The principal positions which Tiosoga advanced gave birth to other thinkers and oracles among our people who hated lies and fought to defend the truth fearlessly. One of these was a little known woman poet of the 1920s, Nonsi Zimkweto, who was a loyal supporter of the ANC whose poems were published by the periodical Umtetelu about. And during this period, she composed a polemical poem, uh, distinguished by its honesty, uh, denouncing Eltim Babaza, who was editor of Abandubad. And she said, Put Dalam Babaza Lagbo. Uima Zelubi Silunane, Olunga Safigu Nasazim Babe, Umtetel Gabandu Dalagbo. We were banging now on our minds, a yard days are the honor to Valala. What about my appeal? A good funds were a winning. Who are banging a banana of a polella I meet. When I'm for Baza, Lu Yang, Yang, all as well, Lu Petrang is courted. You are figuring out At the Atroni Africa, go from the Weni, Ucho Obonga, and Runga, and Mabel Gai Awule. Clearly, she had heard and responded to what Kiyosoga had said 75, earlier, 75 years earlier that the nation should be told the truth such as she understood it. And Kai Unkam Kai also understood the courageous actions this required to realize the vision which Kiyosoga espoused when he wrote of a better day for the Africans in the diaspora and all his sable brethren in Africa. Because when he bid farewell to the patriots who left our shores to fight in the Second World War, Nkai said, I'm going to phone in near France. Nikumbuli nta leni shema kai. Izi hand was on genda was in zoyis. Kubani la ponge na msa ni bengiwe. Sinenziti ni lesi zoskani. Ambani matole mazis mabele mate. Ambani matolo nyonga onyonga ande uzela. Ambani kuba lento china sisi boni le. Utiko wakuwe to say chigele na pambi. Ambani nge mile nzenge na kingu. Ambani nge entri ziyo ezge na kiwoju. Gomzi mbo kapu kapu. Gomzi mbo nge nanda aki. Niti tanya, tanya, tanya. And such moments as confront us today as Africans. Do we not have agents need to act as asking SCA in Kaya advice and speak out with the courage of non citizen quiet against all of those who would recolonize our continent. We are surely blessed that today we have had the possibility to stand so close to the white bones and the dust and the ashes which represent all of us and all our people 
a sacred ancestor who will continue to be our guide as we traverse through the troubled times affecting Africa. This difficult circumstance makes it necessary that each one of us repeats uh, after Shakespeare's Hamlet, inspired by the troubles of our continent with all of the imperfections on its head, that the time is out of joint, Ocasio spite that ever I was born to set it right. Amagasha ati bushang and ne is sang and engosh. The Shwandini le tweli tis ngaba gondis. The shambing amanya masri sing ati ita shal kaugena nom kogos. The Shwandini le tu se gufune ganje si tri mi shwangusha eli shwabene. We are blessed, I think, by Sisigele Luzes in Africa, that we have Tio Soga at our side, forever singing those evergreen words of hope, Liza Lissiti Ngalako Titoko Senyanis. Ula le ngotolo, Joaka Mtiga Mazaleni, Bese, Tingana, Honwana, Dololimtaga, Son Nainashe, Jotel. Jengoko watu ke u ino sondonga. Mure na buliba schaba sa Yesu. Osi sigeleli Afrika. Yamule.